Okay, hi. Welcome to. Hey everyone, and welcome to. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my first vlog using my amazing green screen that I have spent the last week building. It's been a challenge. I went all the way to Shamshu Po, and um, obviously. We've got this situation going on here in Hong Kong, so um, sort of navigating the crowds of people in masks and then the shop that sold me a green screen, um, basically didn't sell me a green screen, it was just a, a blind. And so I had to mix a lot of green and um, match colours and paint this blind about three times to get this green so that I can have images behind and explain what we're doing, okay? So I promised you that I'd talk about choosing interesting colours because a student asked me that question and I thought about it and I realised that's a huge question that I can't just answer in one sentence. So I'm going to talk about my own personal experience of choosing colour um, and I think the first thing to realize and going back to my old foundation class I had a great uh, foundation professor called Martin and he took us to the local theater it was an old Victorian hundred odd year old theater very grand very ornate great subject to draw but he made us make bar charts of that environment we had to just look at the proportions of color so quantity of color is super important how many colors we have and how much of each color we have so interior designers they would use a uh, uh, 60 30 10 percent rule where you'd have the dominant color of 60 percent then you have the secondary color 30 percent then you have an accent color which is about 10 percent so that's a good thing to consider okay Secondly, just collect inspirational colour choices. Look at paintings, look at photog photographs, pick up a leaf and just look at the colours. Okay, nature is a great start, but it might just be a painting, a beautiful painting. Okay, I'm going to give an example of a good old friend of mine, a painter, a very successful painter called Andy Cranston who I studied with at the Royal College of Art in London. And he's explored two things, really. Uh, obviously, well, three, th many things, actually. I can't even say it's two or three. Um, he's really interested in composition. He plays with composition. His paintings don't really have perspective, but there's really interesting composition choices. So just purely design 100 composition, OK? Um, and the story is very important and his influences are huge. Um, but the other thing is colour and his choices of colour are really determined and original and interesting. And I, I really encourage you to look at painting. It's, it's really, really important to uh, see how a painter chooses colour, okay? The second thing, sorry, the third thing is to, so we talked about quantities of colour, we talked about inspiration and painters. Um, and the, the third thing I'm going to talk about is the rhythm of colour. Again, another fundamental principle of design is understanding the rhythm, okay? It's a musical term, okay? It's how much, how, how many beats of certain colours are in a composition. So I thoroughly recommend you just to kind of be, be aware of that rhythm. How does it feel unified? Does it feel harmonious? Yeah, is there two or three or four colors um, that are kind of working together, okay? There might be different shapes. Uh, there might be yeah, different quantities again, okay? But the overall combined unity of the composition has a rhythm that's really important to consider okay and the fourth thing is just go back to color theory okay we've gone through lots of different terminology but just be aware of those different color choices like 
monochromatic, okay? You know, same, different than achromatic, which is devoid of any hue whatsoever, but monochromatic might be a good choice. Think about um, the analogous or the adjacent colours on a colour wheel. You might want to introduce an accent to add a little bit of drama, a little spice, okay? Uh, think about also, you know, triadic, you know, three colours on opposite sides of the colour wheel. One, two, three, okay? Um, or it might be tetradic, okay, four colours, yeah? Don't try and have too many colours going on at once. That is a, a mistake that I used to make, okay? Um, only have, you know, th two, three, maybe four, including a spice colour. And, and the fifth thing I'm going to talk about is use apps. We've got incredible technology here at the moment. Um, we're so lucky. I never had this when I was a student. And I'm going to give you three um, websites or apps that could be super useful. Uh, Paloton is a great one. Okay. And Coolers is another one and Colour Hunt is another one and I'm going to put the links at the bottom of this video so you can access those easily um, now having that commitment to being aware of a colour scheme for your work and knowing that we get very stuck in our ways and we have to explore new ways that colours interact with each other. And I'm going back to Joseph Albers. Okay, the, um, the second assignment when we looked at Joseph Albers, um, you know, it's, it was very academic. But just remember, colours interact with each other. Okay. And the app, uh, the Joseph Albers app, is a great one to use as well. And you can see colours, you can grab different... Um, combinations of colours and just see how they lie next to each other using some of the exercises that we did. So I hope that's helpful and please um, you know, explore those things and especially those those are apps I mentioned okay because they're, they're really uh, strong um, and super easy. And I will say one more thing it's one thing that I do before I forget and that is have a folder dedicated to colour and populate it with interesting colour schemes. It might be a painting, it might be a photograph, it might just be a thing, an object, a textile. Um, and just populate it with those schemes. Be aware of colour schemes that kind of work together. Yeah, We are always learning about colour for our entire life. Always. We never stop learning about colour and from when we were children, you know, we started to understand colour. Um, but some, most people, the man on the street, will stop his uh, study uh, of colour. Uh, he'll stop learning, uh, kind of understand colour, basic colours. As an art student, studying the principles, the fundamental principles of art and design, especially the foundations of art and design, we are training ourselves to never stop learning about those subtle nuances of colour. Okay, everyone, I hope that was helpful. Do take very good care of yourselves, and uh, I miss you all very much, okay?